Okay. Share the screen. Come on, baby, share. It's going to be a good day. Okay, so there we are, Friday. Uh, this is class number 12, packet four. Um, no dogs today. I have posted all the video keys. Now, sometimes the video key that I post is related to the problem, but not the exact same as the problem, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, it'll help you work the problem. Uh, last night, I posted a help video, which is the problem. I worked it. Um, I posted one for this seven. I posted one for eight. I know Sophia was asking questions on that. I posted one for nine. And 10 didn't, really, didn't even really deserve a video. I just posted the key. 11, I posted a video like it to you know it's just that tangent angle method i don't I mean 12 come on man i'll go ahead and post a key but it doesn't deserve a video now then we have 13 and 14 and 15 they're all um we're, we're going to work 15 together if we haven't i don't know i've worked it in some classes some classes i haven't but we'll work that one together if we haven't already today so i will get 14 and 15, 13 and 14 posted uh, either a video to that or a video one similar. And then on Sunday, I'll post the last five. Um, and they'll all be about vectors. We'll start into vectors again today. So okay, that's first hour today. All that stuff is from the launch. Uh, and keep in mind that the damp, that a true damping envelope is not linear. I, I looked last night just to see, well, are there some that maybe they're linear? No, I cannot find any that are linear. The only reason I do linear is because it, it's easy, it's easier and it gets the point across. It plants a seed in your head about damping. Oh, um, I wanted to show you this. Oh, let me finish that thought first. So I, in the Facebook post, where, all, where I posted all the screenshots. I also then post the wrap up video or a link to what we're doing right now. And then below that, I'm gonna always start posting just expansion ideas. Uh, things that maybe it's beyond the scope of the course or maybe things there's not time to get to, but I still want you to be exposed to it. Um, Cause remember uh, the Facebook group is forever. I mean, Canvas goes away in May, but the Facebook group as long as Facebook's a company, will never go away. Long after I'm gone, we'll still have the Facebook group. I wanted to show you this. Okay, because somebody asked, uh, what's, a, what's a real damping function look like? And I think I've showed you something. Like but this is uh, more natural damping. You know, you have that button on your calculator, the LN button, the natural log button, uh, as opposed to the LOG button. Uh, let me turn this up so I can hear if you have a question. So the, uh, the LN button is related to E function, right? And you, you guys have heard of E functions. So most logarithms are E to the negative X. When you plug in a formula up there, that's how things naturally decay. Okay, a lot of things decay. Uh, this, this happens to be oscillations, but you know, radioactivity, those kind of things, half-lives, all those kind of things, the amount of sample you still have after a given amount of time, uh, all those are functions of E. So like pi, if, if we go to another planet that has a technological society, they'll know pi. And that's how one way, I don't know if we put pi, I bet we did we had to have put pi on Voyager uh, that went off you know, the probe, um, the Voyager 1, Voyager 2. But I bet we put the E function as well because that's another universal, uh, it's 2.71 something, but that's not important. The idea is that E to the negative X is how things universally uh, decay. And, and even, uh, even like oscillations. Um, so this is a typical oscillation envelope decay envelope. 
Um, and then if you, so I don't, I don't, I, I cannot spend, just talking about damping period is already going a little bit beyond the, the course. I, 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 I don't want to spend a day or two, we have in the past, and I'll pay for it if I do, uh, talking about all the different dampings. You know, it's cool and all, but you next time you really have to understand damping is in a course, a course called Vibrations and Waves, which you'll take in college as most likely your second semester sophomore if you're advanced, more likely your first semester junior year uh, when you're in engineering or in physics. And you'll take a course that's really an awesome course, one of my favorites of all time, called Vibrations and Waves. It's probably the reason why I became a geophysicist, just because I just really fell in love. I love geology. I love rocks. I love, not necessarily rocks. I loved outcrops. I love going on field trips. Um, and I loved the physics of waves. And so I put them together into geophysics. And it's a cool, cool subject. Wasn't enough to keep my interest for the rest of my life, but for a few years, kept my interest. Uh, here is um, now. Sometimes we don't like we don't want natural decay. Like I also in the Facebook group in the comments added some pictures of shock absorbers, you know, for cars. Um, and so in this one here, this is like forced oscillations, forced damping, not natural, but forced damping. Um, man-made force, not just through friction or through air drag or whatever. This is man-made force damping. So undamped here is the blue, and that just oscillates back and forth forever and ever at the same amplitude. Um, but you can do strong damping on that. Then you can do something called critically damping. Now critically damping, like the, so the most common way to talk about damping is with car shock absorbers. I know that when I was driving my Pinto, uh, I'll get bad shocks on that car. That's because we drove it around on dirt roads and out in the country at 90 miles an hour and doing, you know, wheelie, not wheelies, but 180s and things like that. And so eventually the, the shocks just give out. It's like a bunga, 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 you know. And so uh, I took it in, we got the shocks, and then the guy showed me how to take a screwdriver. You can adjust, back then you could adjust uh, the damping on your shock of now I think it's all electronic, right? But back then it was just by, by hand, um, it's 1970s. And so uh, you, you can make it so as a tight road, I think you could probably buy them and still adjust them, but you can make it so you really feel the road and those are critically damped where it doesn't, you don't get any cushion. And so when you say critical damping, that's this green line, if you can see it, where hardly any oscillations, you hit a bump and instead of kind of gently kind of dig, taking care of that bump, uh, you feel it. Uh, some people like that. They like to feel the road, right? Off-roaders like to feel the road. Um, and then there's uh, the, the underdamped. That's when it, that's when your shocks are not properly adjusted. And when you hit a bump, these just don't happen anymore on modern day cars. We used to, you'd hit a bump and then the whole car would just continue to boom, ba, boom, boom, under one down the road. Those are underdamped. Okay, so that's true damping, but we're not going to worry about that because we're not because really when you get into the E function, you you're begging to get into calculus because that's calculus, right? Okay. So other than this last thing, that puts us to that puts it to bed. You're gonna have to help me on this because I absolutely do not remember if we did this together yesterday. Did we do this problem? This is. Okay. It's, so I don't think so. so. Okay, good. Okay, great. So we'll do this problem um, uh, together. This will be this will be the final word on damping. This is actually problem number fifteen. If you've already tried it on the uh, practice problems. Okay. So this came from a test. It looks like last year or the year before. This is question six or six points. It says plot two complete oscillations of the X component of a mass on a giant pendulum. And I have a giant pendulum that I hang from the ceiling and it comes back and forth, but I don't, I don't really pull that out until we talk about energy, potential, gravitational, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then energy variance. So we'll 
get to that later, but this problem at this year, I guess when I did it, we had talked about this after that. So orders a little different. So anyway, two horizontal meters. So a big, big pendulum with two, two meters for the X component. Say it, say it takes four seconds to complete two oscillations. If that's about right. Assume a damping function. Now here's this weird, once again, it's a bit, a bit contrived uh, to plant a seed in your head. And that is, uh, that's this weird plus minus minus plus thing. And it's like, this is two equations at once. So we did talk about this, I think, uh, at least the idea of two equations at once. So, um, yeah. You said this was problem 15 for the practice problem? Yeah. It's different. What? It says plot four complete oscillations. Get out of and here. And then it says four horizontal meters away from equilibrium. Yeah. But it's the same type of problem. Let's see. Let me, let me look back. Look at that again. Don't. Oh, well, what's it matter, right? So uh, you can practice that one too. Thank you for that. This is the exact same, basic same problem. Change a couple of numbers around. Uh, two, two zoom points for, you always get two points when you point out an error. Okay, good call. So I've been telling everybody all day it's the same problem. It's so what? it's close enough. Okay, so two meters away from equilibrium. Uh, so I'm gonna start off now. The first thing you want to do is draw is draw your envelope. So the envelope tells you where you're, you know, like I've had students in the past, they will draw their, they'll draw their wave, right? Then they draw the envelope. No, 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 no. You don't clip, you don't clip your amplitudes. No, no, no. You've got to first draw the envelope, then fit the, fit the oscillation inside that envelope. That's why it's called an envelope. So we're going to use this equation. And what this tells us is that this tells us that the slope of that envelope will be plus or minus one eighth. 0.125 is one eighth. So plus or minus one eighth times t. So if I plug in the final time, which is two seconds, uh, four seconds, if I plug in four seconds, four times an eighth is one half. That means that I'll start at I'll do the envelope in red. I'll start at two, I'm just gonna call that two and negative two. And then I will drop off at a rate of one eighth of a meter per second. So four seconds later, then I've dropped off four eighths or one half. So I'll put one half here. I've dropped off down to, I've lost one half of my amplitude. So uh, get the ruler out. And now connect those two up with a dashed, a thick dashed line. Okay. We, I know we've talked about this, but we haven't worked this particular problem. This will be the last one until the test. Okay. Now, now I got to fit my oscillations inside that. So it pretty much spells it out for us. It says that it uh, oscillates uh, two, uh, it takes four seconds to go two oscillations, right? So we got to plot in here, we got to plot in two oscillations. So you should be working this with me, right? I mean, it's no fun to sit and watch. I guarantee you'll fall asleep. One kid, wasn't this year, he said, yeah, I, uh, I, I listen to your help videos all the time, Mr. Asky. I said, oh, really? He says, yeah, they help me sleep. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Put, he puts them on. He said he put them on when he couldn't sleep at night. My voice put him to sleep. <laughs> That's pretty good. That was a good one. Though. Okay, so I put, so I know I'm going to end up uh, back where I started. I mean, minus the, the loss. So I started at two, I, then I'm, I'm probably at two and three quarters, one and three quarters, then I'm at one and a half. So I'm putting my boundary, I'm, I'm fixing my scaffolding. And then I know that halfway, halfway between those, I'll be at the other end. 
now you got to fit in your to keep yourself honest you got to fit in your inflection points and then on uh, signs and cosines the inflection point takes place halfway between the maximums in positive and negative so negative inflection point positive inflection point negative positive okay now i can very carefully uh i want to see this yeah, there's a little bit of art here so I do the up thrust first, so I'm left-handed. And then I come along and do the down. Flat on the edges, steepest in the middle. Okay. You should draw a little Bernie Sanders in there. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's, that's what it looks like. Now, um, it got to answer these questions. So it says, what is the amplitude of this oscillation? Well, normally I'd say two, but if somebody answers two on a test, they're going to get at best half credit because the amplitude is a function of time now. So my amplitude, A, is really uh, that plus or minus 0.125 T minus or plus two meters. Okay. Okay, and then it says, what is the omega? Remember, omega is two pi over the period. And the period here we can see is two seconds. So omega then is two pi over two seconds, which then omega is pi time, pi, not times, but pi with the units of inverse seconds. I'm going kind of fast, so. Uh, the way to stop me is to turn your mic on and say, whoop, 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 go back, stop, slow down. Um, and then 6D is, because uh, I'm trying to, I want to finish, so I'm getting on my bike, take advantage of this uh, rare sunshine and low wind. Uh, so what's this oscillation's full equation? Now, if it was just a typical oscillation, I would say, well, it's X of T equals A cosine omega t, but no, we have this weird. Okay, so it's x of t then equals uh, uh, plus or minus 0.125 t minus or plus two meters times uh, cosine of bracket, uh, bracket uh, pi, Inverse seconds, got to put units in there, parentheses, parentheses, T, boom. Whew, okay, so there's the overall equation. Good, I'm recording this. Thank God. All right, um, so that ends it. That ends oscillations for now. The next time we come back to oscillations, we'll be doing derivatives. We'll do the, the, the slopes of oscillations. And that's kind of cool. And that, ha ha, that involves a chain rule. I hate to say it. If you're in calculus, you know the chain rule. Okay, so now let's go back. I'll show you this. Um, on Facebook a couple nights ago, uh, Macy, Macy Bourne uh, posted this and tagged me in it. Uh, she said, uh, I, now, now Macy, uh, went to Long Beach, uh, state there, Long, Long Beach in, uh, um, in California to college. And, uh, and she originally went to, uh, she loves music. If you know Macy, she was in musicals and all, she loves music and she wanted to teach. She wanted to be a choir director. So she went there to learn how to do music and then see, see what I do in my class. I plant little seeds in your head and that seed sprouted and she decided she switched her major to astrophysics uh, from choir director to astrophysics, uh, which is fantastic. She's super smart. She did a great job. She'll do good. And she just got, she kind of fell in love with the whole idea out there. And so um, she said here, she said, uh, ch change of major. It says, and not having taken physics for two years after ASCII's class. So we started vectors because we're just starting up for second semester. And she says, I was prepared. 
So at least on day one, she was prepared. And now I want to, that's why that, I love that uh, post. And so I want to do, I want to spend time now today, Monday, Tuesday, back on vectors. Uh, we're going to hit them pretty hard, maybe even Wednesday. Uh, next week's a test, don't forget. And we're not doing, by the way, we're not doing flex day on Wednesday. I don't know if it's going to be the Wednesday after that, but it will not be next week. That word just came down. So, which is good. I mean, flex day ain't going to matter to you much anyway. It might affect your other classes. Okay, so now let's, we're going to work on sheet number, uh, yeah, sheet number four, six. We'll spend the rest of, day on four, the rest of this time on four, six. Um, we got what, 28 minutes. Okay, so we'll spend the next 20 minutes on four, six, the front. And then what I'm making them do is they have, the, the, for the front of this, they get three dogs Monday. That means that you will have to turn the whole thing in. This will be your, for next week, this will be your, but it won't be due until, ah, uh, shoot, Wednesday, probably. Probably Wednesday evening uh, by midnight, Wednesday midnight. Test is Thursday, but uh, this you'll need this for the test. So this will be this will be your assignment. The front, if you want to stay up with your work, the front of this has to be done by Monday, okay? Because they have to have it done by Monday. Anyway, let's look at let's start at first, and then you'll see what I'm doing. So this starts off with some puzzles. This sheet's all head to tail. The next sheet's all component. But it starts off with some puzzles. So uh, we have these vectors A, B, and C, and then they're rearranging A, B, and C. Your, mine's color, uh, yours isn't probably. If you maybe it is, but we're rearranging A, B, and C uh, to uh, get result different resultants. Okay, so it says write three vector addition equations for Figure B. Now, now I have when I wrote this, I didn't have the ability to put arrows above. I didn't have that. I couldn't find that, and now I do. But if you do boldface, and that means there, it's a vector. So it says D plus C equals R. Well, okay, that makes sense. Head to tail, D plus C, uh, D plus C does equal R. Okay, now let's try, I want you, I made them, no, we did this together. So let's try another one. Let's think of another way, something else to, to put together. Uh, I'll tell you what, I will say it and then you say true or false. Okay. Uh, A plus B plus C equals R. True or false? True. True. Oh, uh, yeah. True. Okay, so far so good. So we could put that down. Uh, A plus B plus C equals R. Uh, okay, how about this? True or false? Um, A plus D equals B. False. False. Because A and D are tail to tail. You cannot add up vectors tail to tail. Okay, so um, mm, Okay. So what if I said A minus B equals D? Does that work? Remember, minus you flip the arrow. No. No, no, still doesn't work. How about this? R minus C equals D. True. That's true. And you could also, this is one of the cases in vectors where addition does work. Look, we said D plus C equals R. From there, you can also say R equals, uh, uh, sorry, C equals R minus D. You could say D equals R minus C. So you can get it, you can get your equations that way too. Uh, all right, so you're supposed to come up with different ones on this one. All right, two others that work. All right, you, you choose, there's various options. Um, now for number two, the second one, I made them go to the board and work that. So the second one, you're supposed to come up with three vector addition equal, I'll tell you what, Let's give that for homework. Let's go to, let's instead do number, let's do this one, the last one. 
So let's work this one together because this is subtraction. We'll come up with a couple of them. You come up with the third one. It says write three vector subtraction equations for figure C, subtraction equations. All right, so it has to have a subtraction in it. Okay, blow this up. Well, so I can't say A plus B plus C equals R. Um, uh, okay, it has to have a subtraction. Say E minus B equals A. Okay, I'll write that down first. E minus B equals A. Okay, E minus B. No, uh, you could say E, you can't say that because, uh, you know, E is here, E is here, B is here, A is over here. They don't really connect up. But, but you do, oh. Okay, go ahead. Uh, could you do E minus R equals A? E minus R, now that works. Oh, uh-uh, that doesn't work. E minus R equals A, does not equal A. Uh, oh, that's that's not what I meant. Um, wait, now I have to think. Yeah, because you gotta watch your, remember your resultant has to be first place to last. I mean, you know, it has to be from the beginning to the end. E, e minus A equals R. Let's check. E minus A equals R. E minus A. I don't think that's, that still doesn't work. Would B minus C equals E work? B minus C equals E. B. Oh, wait, no, no, no. B wait. Isn't, that won't work. Because you can't have B and C come together. So none of those work. See, it's harder when you got a subtraction. Say it again. E minus C equals B. E minus C equals B. Okay, so I take E, flip C. Yeah, that works. Check. That's one. E minus C equals B. Now, on the test, the way I have it is I give you a puzzle, and then I'll, I'll look for one to put on the um, – yeah, I'll, I'll put a sample problem on the on the practice, but I list, I give you a puzzle and then I, then I say, okay, circle the ones that are correct. And I give you like six choices and then two or three of those are correct. Uh, another one might be, um, hmm, hmm, how about E minus R? No, that didn't work. E, oh, oh, okay, okay, but E minus R equals negative A. Yeah, I'm flipping arrows. E minus R equals negative A. That would work. Yeah. Okay, so it's a little tricky. Mm, anyway, so the front, the rest of that is homework, and I'll post a key uh, from, to the front, maybe only. I'll post the key uh, Sunday night, no, Monday. Because we're getting close to that test, so I'll probably po post the front of the sheet Monday. Maybe front and back. Now, speaking of the back, let's go to the back. Oh, so no, 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 still the front. We got to do, let's do number two. We'll do number two together, and then the homework will 2A, and then uh, we'll have time probably. We may finish a few minutes early. Uh, but let's do 2A together. And then I assign them 2B to work on, on their own. Okay. So now we, you'll need a protractor. There's no way around it. You need a protractor. Uh, if you don't have a protractor at home, uh, you'll need to get one because you just have to have them. To do a test, you have to have a protractor. They're like, you know, 50 cents or a dollar at Walmart. But I had a bunch of them and I sold them all. I sold them for what I bought them for. Um, in my room, they're all gone now. Anyway, you, you can get away with not having a protractor, except that then they want you to describe the vector. So let's do A together. Okay, so we've done this before. We, we've had a taste of this. Okay, so um, here we go. Uh, it says you're supposed to take three quarters of A. I'm gonna leave A alone. Those with a iPad kind of shine here because they can just, they can, they can capture stuff and drag them around the screen. 
But um, here for A, I'm going to cut it to three fourths. I'm going to flip B and add that to it, head to tail. I'm going to multiply C by three, add that to it, head to tail. So I kind of try and visualize what's going to look like a general idea. Okay. So you work it and I'll work it. First thing I want to do is cut, uh, cut A by three quarters. It'd be better if I had a ruler. Where's my ruler? I'll just use this ruler, I guess. Okay. Sure, I mean numbers on it. So You keep working. I'm trying to fit it into one. Okay. So that's about three quarters. Uh-uh. Violet my own rules. I'm supposed to use rulers here. No free handing. These are, then it says construct on a test. You'll lose points if you have the old shaky hands. You try and do it without a ruler. So your line's got to be crisp. Okay. So that's three quarter A. About. I, I hear I'm telling you to be precise and I can't find my ruler. Uh, keep working. There we go. Okay. Three quarter. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got it. Yeah, that's wrong. Woo. No, that's right. Okay, yeah, that's about right. Okay, so that's three quarters. And then I take B. Now here's where you want to um, put in, not so much a B, but C definitely, but you want to put in uh, some guides and those are called lines of action. So I do mine in green. So I'm going to extend B the dash line. And then you're going to take B and you're going to double it and uh, and flip it, flip it and double it. Okay. And it's got to attach the tail of B attaches to the head of A. So it's going to go for nine. Mm -hmm. That's why a that's why a clear ruler works best. You can see through it. Wooden rulers aren't so good. Takes me right to about to there. So that is 2B. Okay. And that was three quarter A. So this, people ask, well, what's the practical application of this? Well, if you're looking at forces, okay, and you're trying, you, you're, well, this is how we'll add up forces on objects. Um, and you're saying, what if I, what would happen if I cut that force in half and you go, well, let me add those up. Okay, now the object is going to go in this direction. What if I double this force? Okay, let me try that. Okay, so it's more of a visual of what, what the result of doing this is. Like if one of the forces is wind blowing on a bridge, what if the wind doubles? What's, what's the counter going to be for my bridge? Those kind of things. So this does have practical application. And then for C, I've got to extend that one because that's going to be, that's a harder, my eyes have got to, unless I'm going to actually do a protractor, uh, I do a cheap man's protractor for the, at least the construction. Now C, you're going to multiply by three. One, two, okay. Multiply by three. And I got to keep that orientation the same. Blue. One. Let me double check that. Yes. 
Okay. Boom. Arrow. That is three C. Okay. So far, so good, eh? Okay, so now, um, uh, something to do this. Now, we gotta draw the, the resultant. And you, wanna, you gotta have a different color for resultant. So resultant goes from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, well, okay, here's what I'll see happen on tests. Students will do this and they'll do a different color and they'll leave it like that. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. So students will leave it like that. Um, and you're gonna get a seven out of 10 if you do that. Like you have, the resultant is a vector. It's not a segment. You have to commit to a, and if you did this, you're gonna also get a seven out of 10. This is wrong, okay? You, you arrow, the, I realize it's head to tail, but the resultant is from the very beginning to the very end. Here, here's, the, here's the explanation I gave in class for this. Um, if, let's say that this is my home and this is school, okay? So um, you would think I would just go from home to school, but Let's say there's a big dog, two big dogs that chase me on my bike, which does happen, by the way, uh, over there on Brook Street um, sometimes. And so let's say, that, oh, sorry. Let's say that they're chasing me on my bike. What am I doing? Okay, I don't know why that's happening. Anyway, so I then have to go all the way, here. I have to go all the way around these other streaks to get to school. Well, what the resultant does is it takes, it, it summation, it adds up all those blue arrows and says what those blue arrows are doing. It, it accomplishes it in the most efficient manner. So what those arrows are doing is they all get you to point A to point B, but the resultant does it in the most efficient manner. If it's forces, you have five forces like we did back before Christmas. I said, well, here's like a car going up a hill. If five forces are acting on something, the resultant says, what if that was just one force? What's the result of all those forces adding in? So here I'm saying, if it's my home and school, I'm saying, what if I just walked from, no, I didn't go all these, I just went one direct, like as the crow flies, uh, that would be my R, okay? The last thing we have to do here, and then we can call her good for the week, is to write the to write the description of this. So when you describe it, this is a map view, it says. So when you describe it, you have to give the length and the orientations. There's my east-west line. That's east, that's west. And so we measure everything uh, from the east-west line. So I need to know that theta. This is where you'll have to have a protractor. You can kind of guess it, but that theta, theta, let me blow it up, theta, you gotta know theta and you gotta know the length. Now you use this scale right here. One centimeter equals two meters per second per second. And so when you punch that in, you're gonna get that it's around two, 2.2 centimeters, you should get that. And so that equates to 4.4 meters. These are acceleration vectors, turns out. Meters per second squared, okay? At, now your angle. When you measure that with the protractor, you get about 80 degrees. And then how do I say that? South of east. So that would be your answer. Uh, Reminder, let's see, here it is. Uh, if it's map view, that's our quadrants. North of east, south of east, north of west, south of west. But on the next one over, it's a pro, for this one, it's a profile view, and that's looking at it from the side, and there's the uh, quadrants there. 
or profile view problems. Above right horizontal, below right horizontal, below left horizontal, above left horizontal. So that's the way you'll do it here. Okay, now I have the key posted. And there's the official key uh, to the one we just did. This is done very accurately. Okay, I did it in a different order. Order doesn't matter. Order as you add these up, or order as you add vectors doesn't matter. I have a good animation of that. I'll try and put that in the screen in the uh, comments if I remember. Oh, okay. But right now, uh, uh, I'm going to bid you adieu here, and I'm going to jump on the bike, go for a ride. Um. So. Next week, uh, and really this weekend, uh, go ahead and do this. You just have to do it eventually anyway. But this weekend, let me oh, stop sharing. This weekend, uh, you want to concentrate on the practice problems. I promise you, there'll be a huge payoff on Friday for you guys next week. Uh, we'll get the last five Sunday, um, and they'll be involving, they'll involve back vectors. So probably two of them will be head to tail. And three of them will be component method, but we'll work on component method starting again on Monday. We've just barely touched on component method. Okay. Um, we're going to hit it hard next week. All right. Anything else before the weekend? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. don't leave. I'm going to screenshot this so we all have proof you're here. Very good, very good. All right, everybody. I'll see you guys uh, Monday. Have a good weekend, folks. Uh, see me on Facebook. Bye-bye.